So one of the things that I wanted to bring ar around uh, to this is uh, breathing. You know, if you look at what your body takes in for nutrients, you take in liquids, solids, and gases. And, you know, if you're eating food, getting a little snack while you're out there, you can go without that for quite a significant period of time. Uh, months, uh, under adverse conditions, you can survive quite a bit. Your body will eat itself. Uh, I've got more than a few months, I think. <laughs> um, you can go without liquids, depending on the conditions, up to a couple of days. But without air, you've got minutes to brain death, and that's about it. So when you're looking at prioritization of what your body needs to do, it needs to bring in air. Where float tanks come into this is it takes gravity out of the equation. And I think you already know that, so I'm not really, I'm just kind of preaching to the choir on that. A little close, further, closer, closer. Better now? Okay. So <laughs> the whole thing with breathing. Um, what a lot of us don't realize is why people tell you to lift something on the exhale or on the held breath, but not on the in-breath. And that's because your muscles are busy doing something else. There are a lot of laws of physiology, and sometimes they hold up and sometimes they don't. But it's a real easy practical demonstration anytime you want. You can even grab a hold of the chair in front of you, squeeze it, and try to, try to take a deep breath. And because you've already prioritized one thing, it's a little harder to breathe. And your body's busy contracting to protect itself from injuries and all these things, aches and pains of the day. And how much of your body has to breathe, it isn't just the lungs. The lungs, you know, even myself, I, I teach this stuff, and uh, I run into the misconception sometimes. I get this internal image that my lung is this air sac, like this air balloon. Do you ever get that image yourself? You know, it's like you breathe in, this big air sac fills up, <laughs> and you breathe out. This. And these lungs are actually pretty solid. They're, they're a, a very liquidy sponge. They're, they're, they're pretty thickened. And uh, it, it takes actually muscular effort to really draw and create vacuum to pull that air in. And when you do that, you've got to push everything in your body down a bit to create room. Your body needs to expand three-dimensionally. It needs to lengthen, broaden, and deepen in order to get the fullest breath. And for something as, as vital as air, I mean, minutes till brain death, every single in your muscle in your body starts working with this. When you lengthen your body, um, your pelvis actually has to stabilize so that when you push everything that's below the diaphragm, which is most of your internal organs, down to create that vacuum, it's got to have somewhere to go. And so this bowl that's your pelvis, you have to adjust tension in your inner leg, your outer leg, all the way down to your feet. Just going through your day, that's part of what tires us out. Hanging on to old injuries, clenching, breathing, moving through patterns of dysfunction. And one of the nice things about floating is, is it takes gravity out of that equation. That same way that you pushing down on a chair makes it harder to breathe in, your aches and pains of the day, it makes it harder to breathe in. That pain in your hip from sitting on these chairs a little too long, listening to people a little too long. And how many times did you shift one side, and then the other, and then the other, right? You know, one leg over. And, and what your body's doing is protecting itself from injuries. We'll stay crunched up like that and take a really deep breath. Doesn't go so well, does it? Add to that, it's got to go up, too. I mean, if we don't got any lift, not just down, but up, it's not going to breathe so well. So in order to take a deep breath in, your collarbone actually has to lift with this big diagonal muscle. Your upper rib cage, and your rib cage goes this high up. It's kind of creepy to think about, isn't it? You know, first ribs way up here. But uh, breathing in deeply up and out and forward, practically every muscle in your body contracts at some level to do that. Ever been really exhausted and stood up? Not so easy to do, a little bit tired. Gravity's influence on your body over time adds to that. So making that lifting or pushing down or any of those readjustments just harder to do. So one of the things that's really amazing about flow tank is that buoyancy neutral, right? 
you get into that float tank, and it's as close to floating in space as you're going to get. If your body needs to expand or contract, and I'm just talking about the respiratory rhythms, I think the people following me are going to talk about more interesting rhythms than that, but I'm talking about a vital rhythm of your life just made that much easier. And I think that a, a big part of what people come to a conference like this is to get things that you can tell people that might not know what it is that you do and how it helps and how it's going to directly help their life. And if you tell somebody it's going to help them breathe, because it makes it easier on your muscles, I think that's pretty straightforward. I think most of us can understand that. And if you want a little bit more follow-up for something like this, you should look at the effects of sleep apnea on weight gain. If you can't breathe, you can't repair. Your body on a cellular level needs to exchange gases. In with the good, out with the bad. All that neat stuff, right? And if it can't do that, you can't do that. You just don't get better. As if that isn't bad enough, if you can't breathe, remember, you can take in solids, liquids, and gases, right? If you can't take in air, what do you think that's doing to your stress rates? What do you think that's doing to your blood pressure? What do you think that's doing to adrenal response and release of cortisol? Real simple answer, it's making a lot worse. So long story short, one of the easiest things to remember about a lot of this stuff is uh, just give somebody um, a weight, have them hold it up, and ask them if it's easier or harder to breathe. Try it yourself. Seriously. Push on something. Push on something? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Chair back, anything. Push hard. Take a really deep breath while you're pushing. And now take a deep breath. I'm sorry. Now take a deep breath without doing that. Is it different? As easy as that was to demonstrate, it's as easy to demonstrate to anyone. And, it, <laughs> and if you want to know how it stresses you out, I mean, what do we do when we get stressed out? We forget, we hold our breath. And then everything's going well. <sighs> Didn't want to do that into the microphone, right? So imagine if you didn't have to fight for that breath. Then you already know that. You've already been in a float tank. But just telling somebody they don't have to fight for a breath. It's just going to be easier. They get, they get to rest there. And then, wow, your brain's free to do so much more. If you're not fighting for every breath that you take, if you're really rested and relaxed, <sighs> you finally get to exhale. You're repairing better. You've got hydrostatic pressure. You've got buoyancy. You've got better pressure on the outside of your body. With more pressure on the outside of your body, even though there's pressure there, it's, it's easier to breathe. I know that's kind of odd, that hydrostatic pressure. What do you suppose that's doing to your circulation in your skin? It's actually reducing it, wouldn't you think? It's like a sleeve. Why is that important, do you think? Well, it'll take down inflammation by reducing peripheral, peripheral, wow. It is that time of the afternoon, isn't it? The peripheral vascular compression, the compression on the outside of your body, you're just processing more volume through the inside of your body. If you're sitting in a sleeve, the blood supply is getting pushed on, like a hand pushing on you, just like most massages, and pushing a lot of blood through the deeper parts of you which includes liver and kidneys. So what starts happening is you get better internal respiration, not only external re respiration. If your body's already pushing the fluids to the deeper surfaces and you're processing it better through your liver and your kidneys, you're detoxifying better. You're running more volume through there because there's less room in the skin. I don't really have much more to say than that. <laughs> 